The annual conference of education experts is held in Cairo, Egypt this time. It's an annual congress that is held in different parts of the world. And experts here are coming to draw a vision for education transformation. Join us in the special edition of Exclusive. This event is happening in Egypt for the very first time. Until now, it's happened in very important countries like the US, in both Los Angeles and in San Francisco, as well as in Saudi Arabia, in um, the Emirates, and in Qatar. And for the first time, we've decided to, uh, for a, such a big country like Egypt, to host it here as well. Um, we have great guests. Um, there are representative ambassadors representing their own countries in order to collaborate in terms of systems of education to um, um, to see what works and what doesn't work and how Egypt can maybe improve or get better at everything. Um, the preparation is obviously huge because we have um, very important guests and we have a huge number of school principals and heads of schools participating as well as their staff of course. There's a great um, interest in everything that's happening. We're going to cover uh, obviously Egypt, uh, Egypt's vision 2030 which is very important because all schools need to 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 go by those standards need to achieve those standards and um, we talk a lot about technology especially chat GPT because as we spoke about this uh, some months ago when it was so new it's become very used now and how schools are going to approach all this AI and um, and yes yeah, so very interesting presentations amazing uh, amazing presenters and wonderful wonderful guests that we can all learn from. We're going to talk about how um, um, standardized exa examinations, how that impact the um, the how how a school is managed. Basically, uh, we're going to talk about how um, coaching and mentoring helps students when it comes to well-being. We're going to talk about the important subjects such as uh, PE, music and arts because as we heard in our previous session, academics is not everything. We need to look at, um, at the student in a holistic approach and in order to develop the, the child as a whole and, and get, get them ready for the future.
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tagrid, and it's great to be here. And uh, kia ora tato to all of uh, you watching. That's uh, greetings in our indigenous language, Māori, from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, for us as a country, uh, we are a small country and we are a country built on a foundation of biculturalism. Uh, and within that, we are also trying to have an inclusive education system, which represents the diversity of our education uh, system. Uh, and so it's been great to be able to be part of this conference today and share some of the concepts on which the New Zealand education system is based. Um, whilst we recognise Egypt can be very different to New Zealand, Egypt has a very big population, um, but hopefully some of the concepts that we've been able to share today might be relevant for the Egyptian system. And part of that is equipping students to be ready for the future. So it's less about uh, specific information but teaching students how to navigate information so what to do with the information once they receive it how to assess it how to think about it critically um, but also for us it was important to share today the concept of what we call haora which is well-being and that's not just physical well-being so that's not just about doing education sorry uh, about physical education or doing sports um, it's also about how you're feeling emotionally uh, mentally and how you are engaging with your community your um, religious groups so that you bring all of that with you to school and so that's part of our education system um, which hopefully was relevant to today's audience in terms of how to equip um, Egyptian students for what is a uh, very exciting future um, but to be honest quite an unknown future in terms of the sources of information and the technology that students today will be working with in the future. What's in store is New Zealand is not that far away. <laughs> so a lot of Egyptians I've found think that New Zealand is too far away. We are in the Pacific Ocean, so um, from our point of view, once you fly to Dubai or Singapore, it's just one more flight to New Zealand and it's worth it. So um, for us, what we want to do is see more Egyptian visitors to New Zealand and more New Zealanders visit Egypt. We have a very strong relationship with Egypt on things in tourism. There's a lot of New Zealanders here from our point of view on, as tourists, but we want to see that grow. And that, uh, as for areas as us, is helping with Egypt's move to digital services. So how we've been able to convert a lot of our public services to digital, so that's health records, information records, library records. Um, uh, but also in the primary sector, um, we're looking to grow our relationship with Egypt and uh, you will have seen uh, from the uh, New Zealand Twitter account here that uh, we have Egyptian citrus fruit in New Zealand and that's fantastic for us. Um, we're also looking at exporting timber to uh, Egypt on top of the, um, I guess, the milk and the butter products that New Zealand is traditionally known for. Um, but we want to move beyond that to uh, helping uh, Egypt meet its food security needs, but also the modernisation push in the digital services. We try to um, uh, obviously um, bring most of the schools here in Egypt to come together and, um, and, and discuss some of their challenges, some of the great work that they're doing, um, and try and implement what's going on in other parts of the world and try and bring that to, um, to Egypt and try and better the education here and give them all the facilities that they, that they require to actually um, uh, you know, develop their education and develop the country um, in such a way that um, we're trying to speed things up and try and push things forward. Um, and I hope we're doing a, a, a good job uh, in doing that and we're going to continue to do that and try and uh, strive the education sector here in Egypt.
what we wanted to do, we wanted to bring kind of everybody in the decision making process um, and in order to move forward and to develop the education we need to um, bring everybody in the, in, in the food chain so to make sure that everybody is sitting here and listening to what's going on and, and, and up to date with what's actually happening on the ground in the schools um, so um, in, in, in doing that what's going to happen is moving things much faster rate okay and there's going to develop things in a much quicker way and that's our aim really is just trying to uh, bring everybody together. I think that the engine and the expectation is to bring together the, uh, the wealth of expertise that we already have here in Egypt. There are so many high quality uh, schools. We have the, uh, the assistant minister here from the Ministry of Education that's supporting the educational reform in Egypt. I think the idea is to make things better for our children, for our parents, for our whole community. we have to do in schools now is we have to work out where it moves from being a toy to being a tool. I think the first phases of it of any sort of development in schools, it becomes a, a honeymoon period where the technology is used but isn't used in its best way. Our challenge is to move from it being a very new uh, development to something that really does benefit the children. Well that there's a, a lot of comments in, in the educational press about this nearly 70% of the jobs that our children in schools now will go into have not yet been created. And this is incredibly exciting for us as educators to be teaching the children for uh, skills to go with the knowledge. So we want our children to be able to apply their understanding, not just recite it back. education reforms in Egypt 2030 and what that means in terms of impact for our current schools and how we all get on board with that. I'm like many who have been in Egypt before and have come back and have seen tremendous growth and tremendous interest in what's happening in the education sector both in the international schools and in the government schools and I think one of the most exciting things about this conference is how do we make those two paths come together and support each other in terms of the 2030 goals. We have so much to learn from each other but once again it's a globalized world and for us to be on the same page in terms of education that prepares our students for an international world, for a world where they will be interacting with children, students, leaders from all over the world as they continue to progress is part of what we're discussing here today, an important conversation. We can't hide from technology anymore. I think we tried many, many years for decades actually in education. And if there was any silver lining to the cloud of COVID-19, it was in waking us up to the potential of technology as a learning tool in our schools that we all must embrace because it's the world that our children inhabit.
The technological revolution, on the one hand, has been described as frightening, but on the other, if we manage it properly, it's going to be a wonderful boost for education because we're going to be able to move into um, a realm where using artificial intelligence we'll be able to allow children to progress in their education at their own pace. And teachers, I think, will be more facilitators than people who dispense knowledge. And we really do need them to continue to be facilitators. In a, a gathering like this, what I think you find, or certainly what I find, is that there are nuggets of wisdom and information that keep dropping down. A lot of things that uh, speakers say, one might know already, but sometimes there's something that reminds us of perhaps something that we should really be doing, or something that w where we say, actually, I must try that. And then the networking with various other people in education, with providers and, and colleagues from other schools. This is always a very valuable um, spin-off, as it were, from this kind of conference. The session inside, they discuss different topics, especially talking about the future of education, teachers training, assessment, and how to customize learning material, learning resources, learning curriculum to meet the students' needs. I, th I think if we achieve these goals, uh, the event will get out with uh, very good results. It depends 100% on technology. It's online assessment for students to meet the students' needs and check the students at the benchmark of the grade level to check the reading and uh, math and uh, early literacy skills. And now, as we heard from different representatives from uh, inside this event, from different ambassadors, most of the countries now depend on uh, technology, online assessment, uh, to improve the uh, performance of the series.
That was just a glimpse of the Education Experts Annual Conference that was held in Egypt, drawing a vision for the future, where education experts came from different parts of the world and attended this important Congress in order to draw a vision. And we would always say that the sky is the limit in our cooperation. Since we are hands together, definitely we can make a difference. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you on next episode on exclusive.